Hi, Brian here with some Brilliance. This is going to be part six and the final part of Stitch Artist Level 1, Introducing the Controls. I'm going to take a quick look at some of the things you can do with the context menu, as well as some of the short keys that you can use when you've got the Stitch Artist mode engaged. Some of the things a context menu can do is affect the nodes that are selected on an outline. Here we'll select a node, which is currently a curve. Both Bezier handles move together. If we tell this to be a cusp, it still has a curve going in and away, but they can now go in different directions. That is to say, the handles will move independently. If we switch back to curved, you'll see that they're locked together again. And the third choice we have would be to make it a line which, of course, takes all the curve out of the shape going f to that point. So the other side is still controlled by this node. If We tell this to be a line. And, of course, we can go back the other direction and say this is going to be a curve and maybe even a cusp. Now, another thing we could do is break the line at that point. If we have a look in our tree, you'll see we now have two independent lines. And of course, we could break at multiple points if we had them. So here you can see, whoops that we've broken that down into multiple sections. Let's create a closed shape. And let's take and select this point and this point. So here, we're going to have a new option, break across. This is going to create two separate closed shapes. Of course, there's another possible shape, which is a shape with a hole, and there might be something else we can do with that. Let's go and create something quickly, like an uppercase letter O. Now here, we have a shape with a hole, as you can see. Let's go ahead and select a point on the outside and a point on the hole. We can right-click and get connect to hole. Now to see what that does, I'm going to go back and just move those points so you can see the effect. Let's start with the same object. And here we see our outline with the hole. And another option here is separate holes. So now we have our outline and our hole. Suppose we have created a bunch of shapes. Here's one. We'll create another one. And yet a third one, just for the sake of having something to show. Now, we could have 100 shapes. Suppose we click on this one and say, boy, I wish I could see that in my object tree. And there you have it. Sometimes when you're digitizing, you'll intentionally leave out a connector object, perhaps when you're copy and pasting, or simply because it's easier to draw what you need to draw, and you're going to go back in later and fill in traveling areas within the design. Here you see we have the red dotted lines indicating our jumps. Now what we can do is create an object right after this one by selecting it. And we'll just go in and draw a connecting object. And we'll make that another run. Now I might want the same thing to happen on all of these other pieces. You could copy and paste and move them around the tree manually, but that seems a bit tedious. Let's just select it 
and copy it. And now what we'll do is zoom in on this area where we need to insert the new one. Let's select this object because we're going to do a paste over. Paste under pastes before the object, paste over pastes after the object. And there you have it. Let's scroll down and see if we can do it again. We'll select this, we'll do a paste over, move it into place, scroll down, select this one, do the same thing. And there we have it. Another possibility is when you realize that you've used the same object multiple times and you want to replace that with an updated version of it. For instance, suppose this run really wanted to be a narrow satin border. Well, we could do that, and of course we could adjust the properties on all the other objects. Another possibility is to do a copy, and then let's take a look at the other objects that we want to change and do a paste replace. Isn't that handy? Let's briefly talk about how the paste works in the Embrilliance platform. I'm going to take our design and zoom out a little bit, and we're going to select it and copy it. Now you'll notice that it's roughly centered in the hoop. If we start a new page and we do a paste, it's going to paste it exactly where it was on the other page. And it's going to do that because that area is actually within view. If we, however, create a new page and zoom to some different area, for instance, a corner like this, and do a paste, it knows that the original area wasn't in view and it's going to assume that where we want to paste is where we're currently looking. So we can go out and see where we've put it. That's a pretty useful tool when you're doing compositions and moving pieces between designs. Sometimes it's good just to know what the keystrokes are that you can use while you're working. For instance, I'll frequently use the G key to turn my grid on and off. There it is. And by the way, in Stitch Artist, when you zoom in, you'll see that the grid forms a subgrid only on the millimeter scale. And that's useful so that if you're working really tight, you can see how tight a stitch is, particularly a narrow satin stitch, because if it's narrower than one of those subgrids, it's going to be too narrow to, to sew nicely. So the G is good for the grid. H is good for the hoop, and you'll see the hoop also turns on and off the centering mark. So here we're working pretty much with nothing visible until we turn the hoop and the grid back on. We also have the zero key, which zooms in to the hoop. So if I'm zoomed way out or somewhere's in between, zero will always bring me back home. The number keys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, are levels of zoom as multiples of the real scale that you will have calibrated on your screen up in here, calibrate screen. What you'll do is, in the real world, hold a ruler up against this and move it until it's five centimeters or two inches. Now there are some other useful tools that we have with the keyboard. For instance, Let's say I've made a shape, and I control right click to close it, and now I want to quickly add a hole, I can hit the O. And the O has already selected points for me and add hole, so I can just come right in here and right click, and now I have an outline with a hole. It's kind of a handy thing to have. We also have a couple of toggling commands. 
So if I go and add run stitch to this, and you can see previously in this video we've used the stem stitch, suppose temporarily I want to turn those stitches on and off. There are buttons to do this right here, or I can use the N key, no stitches. Similarly, I can use the B key to turn a background image on and off. Now suppose I have zoomed in radically, and I'm in here, and I want to see everything that I've got stitches with, or you know any object with stitches. I can hit A and go to All. Conversely, suppose I have a bunch of objects, and I want to see something that's selected. I can hit S and zoom in to the selected item. Now, I like watching in 3D, but perhaps I have that turned off, and I say, you know, I'd really like to see where the stitch points land. So I can use the P key to see the needle points, and that's on and off as well. There are also some grouping commands. See, right now, this is an object and this is an object, and if I move them independently or click on them separately, I will get just one object. But what if I want to take this whole thing and select it all and group those so that they become a solid item? I can use Control-G, and now that is a group. So if I click on it, I move the whole thing, and it doesn't matter which object I click on. Now, if you've grouped something and then moved it as a group and want to ungroup it, Control-U on my keyboard, and now I can select just one of those objects. Now, another useful tool for us is the X key. X is good in Stitch Artist. When I've done some drawing, I can just hit X and start drawing again. Right click, X, right click, and et cetera and so forth. Now, if I've drawn something with a stitch applied to it and I hit X, it keeps that stitch. If I use Shift X, it switches me back to a line. So Shift X will always draw with a line, whereas X will always draw with the last stitch type that I've used. Now, of course, there are normal shortcuts for Windows and Mac with regard to copy and paste. So I have this selected, and on Windows, it's Control C to copy, and it would be a Command C on a Mac, and a Control V to paste on Windows, and I've pasted a duplicate right on top of it. So I can control V that as many times as I want and paste. And of course on the Mac it's command instead of control. So command X is a cut, command C is a copy, and command V is a paste. There are a few others that we'll use in level two, and I'll cover those separately. For now though, that's a pretty good look at some of the extra commands and controls that you're going to find useful as you get more comfortable working inside the interface of Stitch Artist. We'll see you soon for another video.